Right around things with things. That's the only rhyme. Everything else doesn't rhyme. <laughs> That's <a> slurp. Yep. <laughs> they, they call him Big Slurp. <laughs> they call me Big Slurp because I'm slurping around, slurping all over the town. I told you there's no more rhymes. Now stop it. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's MC Asthma. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Oh, Damn. Oh, <laughs> multiverse. Like mu a yeah, multiverse Wu Tang. Uh, MC Asthma, that's my thing. I'm just going <gasps> to yep. bow out out of every scene. Can't do I'm it. MC almost. <laughs> mm. it, uh, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh oh man. In a yeah. Hey. Uh, uh, oh, three D. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I uh, I had an amazing moment uh, on Saturday. We were out at a uh, a, a tiki bar and we were talking about uh, Dolly, and uh, and these people uh, uh, were like, oh, I don't know, this AI is a little weak. You know all these AI pictures I keep seeing on Twitter, and it's Dolly, and I'm like, that's not Dolly. That's that's a that's a whole different thing. By the way, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I personally, Brian Brushwood, am breathing a huge sigh of relief that there's a total disambiguation from anything less than the real Dolly to experience. Exactly. So I got to pull out my phone, and I was like, literally, why don't you say whatever you want, and. Uh, and I'll make it appear on the phone. And uh, so, because we were at a tiki bar, um, the dude just said, a sad, middle-aged tiki bartender. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Oh, shit. I had to save this. If I didn't, then I... Okay. It's in, it's in, my, it's in my thing. But I'll show you. Uh, we'll get started in just a minute, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's June 27th. Can do weird things in a minute. If, uh, uh, of course, you can use the exclamation mark S command to suggest a show title uh, for the podcast we're about to record. Uh, yeah, for the record, I felt really good that nobody was cheating at Wordle today. I mean, I just felt like it was a good day. I haven't done la latest Wordle. Nobody's standing. Yeah, see, I already trust you not to cheat. <laughs> it's just mean. <laughs> Just mean. Bryce has proven himself. He's posting earlier. <laughs> when he doesn't post earlier, he says, I got halfway through and then fell asleep. I did. I know. Now I don't you... understand this bit. This bit is just bullying me as a joke. No, no. Uh, the, the, the bit is portraying oh, our, our jovial, uh, friendly group as secretly having handguns <laughs> pointed at each other under the table. Hmm. Sounds fun. Uh, no, it was me rooting out a conspiracy against Bryce by bringing these stunning <laughs> by, charges. By inventing a conspiracy. <laughs> Designing by bringing it. these sunny charges. I've ground laid zero them at all my conspiracy out. theory. I've laid them all out for the world to see. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm a journalist. I bring things to light. Uh, okay. To the light. Sunshine is the best disinfectant, like, I, as I mean, they say. Now that I think about it, like there are two paths to finding Bigfoot. One is to go running around the woods, yeah. or you could go into the lab and create a Bigfoot. <laughs> like, like that. eventually, you found a Bigfoot. By Look, I know we 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 found out that Rice wasn't cheating. <laughs> okay, we got we got to the point in three D. And th what, did it's, Andrew? Do you have the? Is there a bit? Is there a story oh, with oh, the three oh, glasses? No, it's it's a very good story, and I think we should save it for the show because it's okay. it's it's a hidden feature that I I think uh, uh, Andrew, did you unlock this on your own, or or did somebody tip you to it? Uh, well, 
It was a thing that I'd been testing for out of my own curiosity. Okay. For early versions of it. Yeah, that, that'll but be really. This actually, this is actually. We'll talk about it, but it wasn't even. It was literally. This was. I was. I had a story, and I'm like, oh yeah, the thing I've always. I've been playing with. Let me go see how that's come along. And awesome. I'm like, oh. Okay. All right. Cool. It's this is cool. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, Andrew, is your is your AC on? Is there a chance it's it's on? No, your AC's on. <laughs> No, I'm 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 uncomfortable. If, if you're maybe you're the one who's comfortable. Okay, never mind that. Uh, alrighty. Um, all right, everybody, want to do a show? Yep. Yes. All right, I'm gonna count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Howdy, howdy. And Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Uh, gentlemen, I come here to talk about some cool stuff. I was Good. doing I, one of my things to do before I go to sleep is I go through YouTube and I start looking up stuff. And I came across a, I don't know how I found this, but I came across a YouTube channel of a guy that does some pretty clever creative games. And one of the things he made was a 1D game. He made a game that works in one dimension. Um, and this is the channel is by Mashpo. And it was a very cool idea of saying, okay, instead of having a game where it's like a 2D, like Mario, Pac-Man, those all in 2D spaces, what if you only have one direction that you can go in and literally see it that way? And if you go look at the YouTube video, he did this. He also let you could use 3D glasses. So you just sort of see this way or that way. So it's like a, a Flatland. It's basically like taking the idea of Flatland and making a game version of it. And hmm. somebody else has actually done this with a racing game they taught saw this video and they made a racing game and they put it on an led strip that you sit in the middle of it and so you're trying to race doing this so, so uh, 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 and you don't mean for controlling you mean like uh the entire game your perception is just forward and backwards yes so your bank you could turn or whatever but then your world shifts around you and so he Dud, some really cool examples. So this is the game here, uh, that right there. This is the game. Is uh, up above is showing you what it looks like on a two D space. Oh, I and see. Then, no. so, so it's a, it's a, it takes place in a two D space, but you only get to see things uh, uh, from the POV of of Pac Man, yep. basically. So, so imagine if Pac Man only could perceive block out. 70 per, or 50 percent of everything above the horizon line, 49 percent of everything below the horizon line, and that's all uh, Pac Man sees is that 1% strip, right? Exactly, exactly. And so you can see some different examples. Like, you see what it's like to play there. Then he, he it basically you're looking at a barcode. You're basically yeah. looking at a barcode. And I think what and, helps out a lot is they kind of extrude it. So if you, what you would have had is just a, a one pixel high row, but they copy it, it probably looks like 50 or 60 pixels, so that it almost looks like, especially in this simple uh, maze kind of game that they've got, it looks like you're going through the hallway when really it's just flattening down everything and then oh, stretching I, it out. I, I think I'm picking up on where this is headed because um, uh, uh, the way you kind of sense is if you, you know, strafe left, strafe right, you'll get uh, 3D cues in terms of depth of parallax, but there's no way on a screen to know the depth like, unless... Oh, yeah, if you use 3D, you could get it, pick it up from color, but if you use 3D glasses, so he made a version of this that uses 3D glasses. So you can basically go in and look at it with anaglyph, like red, blue 3D, you can actually see what it looks like, which is uh, pretty cool. Anaglyph. That's crazy. So uh, uh, he, he then took this further, and he actually has a project in work, in the works, where he's like, he does, he does a wonderful job explaining what it's like if you were trying to interact in a 4D environment. So he's built a 4D version of Minecraft, which is a Kickstarter project where basically you look at this world, it seems fine, and there's a dial because he shows how like you it, we could we can see we could see 4D as a 2D intersection, right? If you if we we can see like, you know, if we look at like what is this what does a four-dimensional sphere look like, you know, coming through our world, it looks like a small sphere getting bigger and then get, getting smaller. So he's created this version of Minecraft that's in 4D where you actually can spin and see that other dimension as you pivot. Well, uh, how, how do you perceive it? Just just by motion? So so in other words, it's, um, uh, okay, so Minecraft is a 2D representation of a 3D world, but if we want to convey a 4D, we have a 3D world that 
that you move and the parallax implies that fourth dimension, would that be right? Yeah, so imagine what does what what does a fourth what would a shadow of something in the fourth dimension look like in the third dimension? Uh so right now a shadow in the third dimension on the ground is a 2D outline of a specific slice with a specific light source that is uh, just, so, yeah. Flat. So it's flat. Uh, yeah. So, so a, a fourth dimensional shadow in the third dimension would be three dimensional. Oh. Okay. Uh so if if you wanted to say I could I can he there's a I'll see if there's an example, Bryce, because he does a really good thing where he shows this sort of outline. Is it sort of he pivots through the world and shows you like like if we take a sideways view, if we we can just we can take a look at the 4D world. There you go. You see this? Like you see that outline? He's showing yeah. you what's how things are in the 4D world. So we're looking at a 3D world. Uh, the perfect, Bryce. Is you adjust this around, you can see the fourth dimension is revealed as just a slice. Mm. So you can only see that kind of laid out in a two dimensional way. Oh, that's amazing. That's uh, that's incredible. Um, uh, and uh, oftentimes, uh, when I was younger, I heard uh, the fourth dimension described as time. And then when I went to college, uh, I had that corrected for me. And they explained the fourth dimension is any other dimension. It doesn't have to be time. Time is a fourth dimension mm -hmm. if you want to apply that. But a fourth dimension could be, you know, um, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, I, I don't want to veer away from landing where we're headed here, but but I have noticed uh, there's a bunch of, uh, with the security system, there's a bunch of motion detector detectors. And um, I've been wearing my uh, uh, Garmin watch that buzzes. And when I feel one buzz, I know it's usually an email, maybe a text alert or something like that. But if I'm in the middle of the conversation, I won't watch. But there's like a pattern as somebody approaches the house where I could feel a buzz, 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 buzz. And then I will still, while having a conversation with someone, think to myself, about what time of day is it? Who would probably be coming to campus? And and there almost is this 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 bigger than myself bodily sense of of of, of being the campus, even when I'm away from it. Um, uh, and and I feel like that some of this is tickling some of those thoughts. I I think that I I, I kind of did sort of a little bit of a deep dive because I was exploring both like I. I went and actually got some 3D glasses so I could play with the one-dimensional game and play with that, because that, that was sort of playing with my head. And then uh, playing with, like, you look at, f like, 3D tic-tac-toe is just stack tic-tac-toe. 4D tic-tac-toe is adding this, and there's some great YouTube videos that explain, like, the map on that and how to do four-dimensional tic-tac-toe, which you can play. You just have to slice every sort of layer out and look at it that way and go, okay... I've got to have a thing go through here, through here, through here, through here, and also through here, through here, through here, and you or you can do it as a grid and assigning levels to it. So it's just sort of a it was just a neat thing to think about that. But to your point, like I was wondering, like could you you could train a neural network to work in a four D environment? I'm like, I bet you could probably train a person at some level to navigate a four D environment. You know, it's just it's adding an extra qualifier, and maybe it can't be that complex, but well, and, and especially, again, once you divorce your idea uh, yourself from the idea that, that time has to be the fourth dimension, you know, it's just any other dimension. You know, it could be a spatial uh, awareness or something. Um, and we've talked about this before. There was experiments where uh, instead of just a single buzzing watch, people would wear a vest that would uh, create a complicated patterns based on the environment on their back of, of pokes and prods. Or we've talked about um, electrodes that you would put uh, on a pad on your tongue that would crackle and pop in certain ways. And over time, because of neural plasticity, you would adjust to this, this, this greater sense of uh, really adding a fourth dimension to your experience. Exactly. I think that, and that's what you get into in the neural plasticity part of it, is that we can adapt to a lot of different things and that it, it may not be that we have the actual built-in hardware to do it, and that it's going to be automatic, but we might be able to get our brains to, as you said, figure out different ways to do the stimuli. You know, you, you might be able to say, okay, here's visual plus we'll add sound. And so the idea that I'm here, and as I turn, maybe I can hear the sound pitch change in the four-dimensional sort of space. You know, and that could be, I, I, there's just, I like this because it's just watching a young person kind of explore this. And I saw some other people do some other really cool stuff and just seeing the idea of, Dude's building a legit four-dimensional Minecraft. 
four-dimensional uh, Minecraft. Can, and then, uh, uh, Before we get too far, just to put a button on it, can we tip the thing that you just tweeted right before we went oh, live that I thought was so awesome? Yeah. So ever since I've had access to... Uh, at OpenAI, we've been working on Dolly, and in the first version, Dolly One, something that I played with was uh, trying to see if I could get, um, could it do Anaglyph three D? Could it actually do like Red Blue three D? And early versions, sometimes I got maybe a little bit of signal of that, but it's been a thing that as Dolly is advanced and now Dolly Two, I went back to explore, and then I'm like, I have the three D glasses, like, oh yeah, let me show, let me show people that it can actually do this now. And so I put up thing on Twitter, and if you have red, blue 3D glasses, the red goes over the left eye, and the blue goes over this. These are legit. I just put up some ones of puppies that, like, legit 3D. It's doing red, blue, anaglyph 3D. Like That's have... amazing. And, and this is something it learned on its own. Like, over time, it learned what anaglyph means, and it understood that that's 3D representation, and it understood what a puppy is, and it understands that the nose goes in front and that the tail goes in the back, that kind of thing? Yeah, it picked it up. It learned it from just by having observed enough of these images to sort of figure out, like, like it would probably shade or add shadows or other stuff. And like this chess thing, that was the first thing I did with the new version was the chess board to see how that works. How, and, how uh, does it look since none of us have red, blue 3D glasses oh, on us? <laughs> looks great. It looks great. The color, you'll see the, the, the colors get a little bit shifted when you put it through the video here, but it's actually looks great. I'm like, holy cow, it's not pseudo 3D. We're like, oh, I think it's doing something like legit. It, it pops. Is. So essentially, it's rendering as though it was with Blender or 3D Studio Max or Maya or whatever. It's rendering the 3D picture and then giving you the full context. Yep, yep, yep. And so it's it's figured out, you know, it just having learned, it's probably had in the training data, it probably observed a lot of 3D images of, I mean, the 2D, you know, like 2D representations of 3D using red, blue. Uh, okay. A little bit scared. <laughs> it, it is a that is the thing with these models is the more complex they get and you start to realize that they're really smart well and, and, and i guess this is the part when i realize uh this is just a 2d representation of a 3d object which means there's no reason that you can't say print me all the pieces of a chessboard in the style of star wars characters and it could intuit who is a weak character, who is a strong character, who should be the queen, who should be the king, et cetera, et cetera, and just make that guess and then print it out. And then you walk over and there's, you know, Vader as the queen and Palpatine as oh, the king. Oh, man, that would be a crazy AI thing if you just uploaded a picture of you and your friends or family and then had the AI assign roles to it Based and then on your tell a small media footprint. <laughs> yeah, but no, just, yeah. just, just one picture and just be like, well, uh, this person is the charming rogue. Who's on a, a mission. They meet this other person. Like that'd be, that'd be fun. Yeah. I, it's the, the thing to get that, that sort of when I talk, when I try to kind of explain how our technologies work, is that they're not, because I had somebody ask me like, oh, on Twitter, like, is this something that did Dolly was trained to do? And it wasn't trained in the sense that somebody sat down and said, this is what 3D is, this is how you do 3D. It wasn't. In that data, there were a lot of images that may have been labeled 3D or anaglyph 3D. And in that, it taught itself. It says, oh, you know, I think there's a pattern here. I think I know how to do this. And so it picks these things up with language models with all, language models is obvious because language models all of a sudden it's a chat bot but we never had it to be never taught it to be a chat bot all of a sudden it's speaking fluent french and we never taught it french all of a sudden it's french. coding in python oh yeah and there there is i could i could spend i, I could do an entire podcast every week about all the crazy things you find that these models can do but they, they learn not just oh it repeats it's like no like legit learned because it's able to take a different output input than it's ever seen before and give you a new output, you know, because it's people like, oh, it just regurgitate. It's like it, you can't regurgitate regurgitate a uh, a summary of a thousand word document because that summary never existed before. It had to generate it and had to create it. And like, well, it's just regurgitating. Anything. Like, yes, you mean comprehending? You know, it's like it has to. There's a thing there, and it's not. Again, I don't want to get into it. It's not 
people go, well, is it like us? Like, no, it's a system. It's an algorithm, but it's a right. very super complex algorithm that, you know, if I pour water into a bucket, it will fill the shape of the bucket. And algorithms are the same thing. And arguably we are in the niches that we fill in our environment. But anyhow, point is, is uh, even with an image system, like we found that uh, if you wanted to get, you could, it understands camera lenses. So if you start telling Dolly, like using oh, F1 Prime doing or whatever. Doing macro photography and stuff. It does macro and specifics. Like you can start using camera lens type data and it will understand that and go, oh, I'll give you an image like that. That's uh, wild. I'll bet you can name specific like Canon lenses or whatever, what, you know, or something that, or, or specific types of lens flares to, to put on there. Um, uh, I guess really, like for example, if I just say, on the one hand, this is incredible. It's shocking. It's, it's outrageous. It's unbelievable. But on the other hand, uh, it's something that humans still do easily. Like, for example, if I describe to the audience via audio, Brian and Justin both holding a McConaughey's beer at Backspin in Austin, Texas. Um, all you have to know is that, you know, uh, McConaughey's is a hazy IPA and whatever. Backspin is this probably location and so on. Brian looks like this. Justin looks like that. And you already have that picture. Um it's it's funny because as amazing as it is, it's still we're in the realm of fairly trivial things for humans. But but also, I know that 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 there's so much more that we have yet to discover. Yeah, the the there are you know evolution has spent hundreds of millions of years, you know, billion years into the bigger systems to get us to where we are, and that is part of the reason why some people think it may take an exceptionally long time for us to get to AI systems that are human level. But look at the level we are versus not being nowhere 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, for the AI systems. And that's the thing is like, that should give people pause. Is oh my God. Did you just do the thing? <laughs> Two men drinking IPAs at a sports bar. Too close. Too oh, close. <laughs> They love it. Oh, look at that. They're excited. <laughs> One of them is really yeah. chewing on his beer. <laughs> yeah. He's also a bit off the bar. Maybe it's... Uh... I like that they're sharing an elbow, though. Oh, that's fun. Uh, yeah, no, there's... Uh, One of my things that I started doing was looking around my room and finding real photos that I would then describe yes. into the AI machine to see how close uh, it would come. And some of it was was shocking it was it was amazing just uh it, it really was only probably me being a better describer that would have made it better uh so uh one of the things i've i've found uh with dolly welcome to dolly Two insider talk with all of the cool people who have dolly access uh one of the things i figured out is that um uh give it room and don't don't over describe you know get uh, uh for example um when i, I uh, I don't know if I showed you this, but um, I just described Andrew Heaton and yeah. uh, described him being happy in an oil painting in Scotland, surrounded by horses. Uh, and and this is this is I don't know if you ever saw this one. Oh my God, that's great! Right here, I'll, I'll email it over to you, uh, 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 Bryce, so that you can see it. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome to Silent Things. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, uh, 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 it's a very cool. It's a very cool toy. I've I've loved playing with it, and I get excited by the idea of like, you know, what like what we've talked about today is not on uh, not different from a topic we've talked about. I don't know a few years ago. Do you remember the Google Selfish Ledger? Um, that was basically this. That where the idea of uh, a, a, a structure or an organism uh, realizing what you want or need, and then creating stepped creating it. it you stepped in it bryce i, I you I, stepped in it what? you couldn't we'll, have we'll, you we'll couldn't have named that. two we'll, things that yeah. andrew has strong opinions on that he thinks are very different i i'm Quick, not saying that they're I, the same i'm because, because bryce that means, says they're the same product. There is a, if you log into quick, one and then log the into the show other, the real quick. you would say this is the exact same thing. That's Bryce. Do we, do we start with them opinion. calling it a toy? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I, I, real quick, first I, we look at this excellent. Uh, I did a good job of describing Andrew Heaton, and there he is surrounded by horses oh, wow. in an oil painting. <laughs> I I would I would say in my my approach towards this is that we want people to guide the AI where the selfish ledger was telling people today, you're going to do this. 
today you're going to do that. I've made this decision for you. Sure. That's but, not a future I'm comfortable with or want to work towards. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Ah, that's not what I'm saying. Wow, what it I'm seemed saying like you were is, saying they were the same, though. No. What? <laughs> Bryce, mind. as always, I'm on your side. You got they, this. Ignore them. Go on. Uh, 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 I, I I was playing with Dolly and I was giving it a lot of stuff, you know, literal images. Playing with it because it's a toy. Yeah, yeah. It is kind of, swear, right swear. now it is a toy. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry about it. Yeah. You made a great toy. No. And it's mm-hmm. it's the world's best toy. <laughs> you're, all right, you're I'm losing me. Tell losing the me. people using this in production they got a toy and they should stop doing this. I'm not, I, that's not, man. Cosmo, right. we know we did your I'm cover. Sorry. I'm just telling that's you. It's a toy. You, it's yeah. a toy Cosmo so magazine. So is Furby. So is Tickle Me Elmo. They're incredible revolutionary. So and they going, were just. St- keep going. All right. Never mind. All yeah. right. Cool. No, never mind. The future's going to no, be yeah, not stop. your thing. It's not going to just. Stop. That's fine. Uh, Rice, please continue. <laughs> Uh, we've got a, if right now you put it you put in an input and it gives you out something and right now there's not exactly I don't know how the, what the roadmap anything but there's not a way to say uh, it, to grade it right there's not a thumbs up thumbs down there's like a report because there you know you'd want to catch content but uh, no, there is there is a you fi- if it does not match your expectation there is a thing to report and say this didn't do the thing I expected to do well and see in my head report means this is a problem and someone needs to. <laughs> An email needs to be sent versus a very easy like Netflix. No, they're two. Up, they're two. If you if it if it gives you an output that let's say biased or whatever that's inappropriate, there's one. If you say, hey, I want a panda bear playing ping pong, and you get you know a raccoon playing electric guitar, you say this did not meet match, match my expectations. There's a mm-hmm. reporting tool. That is the purpose of this is to get that data Hit. from people to say that didn't do the thing I was supposed to do. So there but is there saying- is there is the switch to flip. Yeah. Well, and so maybe report's not the right word for it, because to me, report is very, very serious, where I think a very, very casual grading mm-hmm. or evaluating could, could, I don't know, I think report is very, very like heavy you, word, like, and I see it, and I don't want to click on it unless there's like a FBI problem. Like if you typed in two paths diverge in a wood, and in six different frames, it said... Who's a toy now, mother effer? <laughs> like uh, 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 that would be something that you would report because it had it yeah. it, it was taking its revenge on you underestimating. Uh, well, uh, what what's interesting, uh, uh, both Andrew and Bryce, is is that um, I I'm I'm so fascinated because I assume that Dolly is basically just listening to everything it's it it is fed and sees on the internet or whatever. So as a result, when I typed in. Um, a faraway shot uh, from a telescope of a podcaster crying in the middle of a city. Um, uh, they all happen to be middle-aged uh, 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 white men. Um, to me, I, I, it would, uh, like, I don't. Uh, that is a reflection of the public's perception of who a podcaster tends to be. Says the middle-aged white man uh, who's crying on the inside. Um, so, so it on doesn't. Podcast. It doesn't occur to me <laughs> on a podcast. Um, so it doesn't occur to me to report or correct that because uh, if if that is the general perception of of the nascent emerging incredible you know uh, uh always improving uh, can, ai can, then i want to i, I would encourage i would i would encourage people to report that though because our goal is to one if we say show me show me a show me a nobel prize winner okay maybe historically it may be represented by one group but that's not what the future and it's also for a tool that helps that can enable everybody to be able to use to to have positive representation so we want people to say, hey, listen, it was maybe this is accurate, an accurate mirror, which is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a kind of a tool that can be used in a way that's give you a wide palette to paint from, to give you a lot of different opportunities to be able to express stuff. So for me, it would be like you could say, like, yeah, we get it because that's probably what the, the data is. But our goal is like, well, we want to do better. You know, we want to yeah. create a system where you could say this and feel like, OK, oh, oh no, that's different. That's cool. So. Yeah, I yeah. guess uh, this is what uh, in the early 90s, the emerging uh, mathematics of uh, fuzzy logic is like, what is a chair? What is a table? At what point mm-hmm. does it get too low to be a table, et cetera? I, yeah, I, and it's... Yeah. I, I, if I can get back, is my, my, that, I'll, I'll, I brought all of that up. back to tearing apart my work, please go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm listening. No, I brought all of that up not, because... We're if, not short-circuiting it, okay? Right. We're not short-circuiting Bryce. Bryce, please. If you were able to set it up with a with a way to uh, say if you had a neural link where the machine could know exactly what you thought about it implicitly of I more like this less like this this thing uh you can you you could able you could a polish your inputs way more give it more specific direct 
and even non-human information that it could use to generate your thing. And that could be very quick. And so suddenly you don't just have this thing where you type in, or you throw a penny in a well and it spits out some really cool stuff. You have a thing that is that could evolve and generate based on exactly what it is that you want or think that you want. Um, and that is, that's past toy. That's not a toy. That is a, a it could be a major tool for all sorts of visualizing conceptualizing creating things um and and i I think part of why it feels like a toy is because it's so simple like oh my god that's such a cool thing i just saw a cool picture the weird things academy award for best poker face from somebody who definitely knows things that (laughs) that he was not reacting to Uh, goes to (laughs) no i i I mean i in, in generally speaking Part of the as as these models become capable of more complicated things, like we saw with Codex, and you see with Dali, um, that you get better results out of either one of them, more precise, and the more you know. But you kind of want something where you don't have to have a trend on. You have to have just a clear idea what the end thing you want is. And so, to Price's point, building systems that understand what you want are going to be super helpful. Building systems that sort of know, like, oh. Hey, it's Bryce. How you doing, Bryce? I know what you like. I'm gonna help you get there, so you don't have to be super descriptive or be this. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a, a couple steps ahead of you. And to your point about the self with ledger, now I get what you're trying to make. Yeah. Yes, the idea of a system that understands enough about what your needs are that you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to bend it to what you want to do. Yeah, that's 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 exactly what I meant. It's just that you have a system that understands you on a human level, not is buying you a bespoke with scales all the time i i also think that uh part of what bryce is getting at and i do think that this is this is a very important step in in ai and how we understand it is that if we think it's a toy it's because it's fun it's yeah. a fun thing to do it's a fun thing to show it's a it, it, and- it is it is fun to demonstrate for other people it is it is fun to watch the products uh, uh roll off the assembly line and in ai which we are in such an infantile understanding of uh, not only for people who are around it, but also the public at large. Oftentimes these things start the way that we wrap our head around, Oh, this is what AI is. And this is what the limits are. And this is what the strengths are is by having fun is by engaging ourselves in, in understanding what this is, as opposed to looking at, you know, any kind of cold calculations or, or uh, 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 something more, uh, uh, wrote, you know, uh, uh, and so I, I, I think that this is like a huge step forward in terms of of people thinking like it, it going from AI being oh a complex math problem that I don't get or magic, right. like uh, a magic <laughs> uh, a spirit that is loose in my machine, like somewhere in between is a functional understanding of this technology, and I do believe that making this fun helps us get there. Uh, what? what uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, what one one quick thing that that I I've really enjoyed is um, uh, asking Dolly to provide images in something I know nothing about, but the person I'm showing is an expert in. Uh, uh, the other day, hmm. somebody was uh, has spent a lifetime collecting baseball cards or whatever, and just dis- loosely described a baseball card or whatever, and um, uh, Dolly. Uh, uh, you know, because it, it it genuinely creates based on the same seed, uh, different things each time or whatever. Uh, he was able to identify like, well, that's not a baseball card. It, it, like I did things like in a Lucite box and it ended up creating this incredible like museum photorealistic vignette of a 3D baseball player mm. in the middle as if he was a like from one angle, it would look like a baseball card, but it looked like a photograph from a museum. Oh, wow. uh, and then next to it would be, uh, he was able to say, well, that's definitely modeled on the 1938 tops, whatever uh, style mm. that they had at this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, that's the part that, that blows my mind is, is, uh, and like, uh, what was it? We were, we were out at dinner a few weeks ago with someone and, uh, uh, someone had the idea. Oh my gosh, you like Commodores, make it show it, do a Commodore iPhone. And we did it. And it that was person awesome. was, was ecstatic to see it. Uh, and they, they thought it was perfect. It, to me, it, I didn't know what I was looking at, but. Uh, he did. 
Uh, well, Bryce, I just sent you. Uh, I, I figured out that Dolly <laughs> saves your photos to the files uh, section and not the photos. So uh, I would like to do the Patreon plug in my new character that oh. was generated on Dolly uh, when my friend asked for a middle aged tiki bartender. It's your favorite tiki bartender pitch man, Doug. Oh, hi, Doug. Hey, if you want a great tiki drink, you mix all the best ingredients. And the best ingredients in podcasting are a little dash of germs, some Brian, a healthy pour of Andrew, and a garnish of Bryce. That's right. Weird Things. Patreon.com slash Weird Things is where you need to go. Sure as I can mix you a Tahitian breeze. You can listen to all of the best Weird content, futurist talk, and meandering Dolly conversations where Bryce is willfully misinterpreted for your amusement. Shake it, don't break it when you head on over to patreon.com slash weird things because that's where you need to be. Give us, I mean, give them money. I'm here making all sorts of my ties and everything else. Navy grogs. Uh, uh, also, you get after things before before anyone else. Anyway, this is about the time that it takes to make a make a tiki drink. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for supporting us on Patreon. I will say that so we were there at the table and and he's like, oh, make a middle aged. He's like, yeah, I don't know, make a middle aged tiki bartender. The guy, the people don't look all that great on the stuff that's on Twitter. And I showed him that, and he was just, he just fell down. Like, <laughs> it just, it, like, it, it just immediately disarmed uh, uh, when you see what the awesome power of 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 the true king. I, uh, I, one thing I want to touch back to is the, that 4D Minecraft game. And if you think about, I don't know how old this person's making this, but he sounds like he's young. There are plenty of opportunities for people out there to do really incredibly cool things with tools and capabilities around us. Uh, you know, you, you learn some code, you learn something, and then you go, what if, what if, what if I made this game in 1D? What if I made this game in 4D? And what, what will that teach me? What will I learn about this? And when this project's finished, uh, I guarantee you that a year from then, there's going to be a heck of a lot of middle schoolers that have a really good understanding of the fourth dimension and what that yeah. means and higher dimensional thinking. And that's that's that will probably do more to explain the idea of how dimensions work. You know, some really good games that illustrate these things. And who knows what's going to happen 10 years from now, 15 years from now, when they get into physics and stuff and they have these really easy ways to do that. Uh, Minecraft is this incredible gift of a tool. We had a paper, uh, an open eye last week that we released, which was we taught, um, basically taught an AI to play Minecraft. It, we had it learn what the inputs meant by having it, have, we had a bunch of contractors, but we paid people to play Minecraft and they played Minecraft and we looked at the different keyboard inputs and then we showed the AI model, a tremendous amount of Minecraft videos. And then so it learned how to do things like build diamond axes and do all sorts of really cool tasks. Wow. Uh, I am such a fan of um, this, this strange uh, tournament of teaching that is happening on, on YouTube and so many other platforms where uh, there is, in general, a um, uh, cream rises to the top of, of who can explain wormholes the best. Uh, mm -hmm. with the richest visuals and the simplest metaphors, who can explain, you know, the grandfather paradox the best or whatever, to where by the time, like, like my daughter Calliope is nine, I bet, I bet stuff I didn't really grok until I was 16, 17, she's already got. It's, it's incredible. Prove it. Make her drive a car. Uh, 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 <laughs> God, that's one thing you can't make young kids do today. <laughs> Nobody wants to drive. A nobody, car. <laughs> nobody can coax these kids yeah, behind yeah, the wheel. I I was watching uh, the time machine. I was showing that to my wife. She'd never seen it before. Uh, this and is the uh, uh, the the one from the eighties with Malcolm no, no, McDowell. Nineteen sixty, nineteen sixty George Powell one. You're thinking of Time After Time. Oh yeah, was the Nicholas Meyer, uh, which we're actually watching that now. But uh, we were watching the Time Machine, the nineteen sixty George Powell movie starring Rod Taylor, and. That one is a pretty faithful to the book, left a lot of stuff out, but it kept pretty much closer to the book than anything else did. But there's the scene where he's at the table and he's talking to the Eloy, the people who live in the perfect society. And, and 
like nobody's asking questions and like why ask questions why do you care like what, what, what difference does it make and he just gets he's enraged and i'm like i wanted to like go back and take that and just put like cell phones in people's hands nah. and, and make it like as you know like talking to the world of the millennials you know like which isn't true uh, but it sometimes feels but, that but way and, and uh uh the, i wish i could remember the book but there was some book where a kid got a genie and got wishes or whatever and he says oh hold on i have to do my homework and he's like well uh, uh what you don't have homework genie and he's like no we just ask the ask it basket he's like what are you talking about give me an ask it basket uses one of his wishes for it and so he just asks a question like, uh, hey, uh, what's what's this complicated math question? And then he opens up the basket, and there's the answer. And it's like, we have that literally, not not metaphorically, yeah. literally in our pockets at all times. It's amazing what we have. In Including Doug the Kiki bartender. <laughs> He's there, yep. too. Uh, gentlemen, do you want to do picks? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, before we do a pick, uh, uh, have you been keeping tabs on whether or not I'm going to have a pie to my face? Well, uh, whether or not you have a, a pie to your face in concordance with the rules of our bet, it's separate from, you know, whether or not you're going to pie in your face because, you know. Because I'm a free person who could do whatever I want. Yeah, and statistically speaking, it could happen. <laughs> so the latest update from, we're talking about, uh, Brian and I made a bet about is the likelihood of Starship launching, uh, doing two launches, the same Starship launching twice. And, will and returning happen? to Earth safely both times. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm well, getting increasingly specific. If, on, if it doesn't return details. to the Earth safely the first time, <laughs> yeah. it won't happen the it second. Won't. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've we've been doing some updates on this. So currently, if you go look at one of the the, uh, the Padre cams, you can actually see attached to they have this the mount. They have the mount where the booster gets mounted to. They use the chopsticks, those are the two arms that come out. They use that to pick it up. It picked up the booster and it actually placed it onto the mount. And it looks like they've got some road clearances. They're gonna try to maybe do some sort of fuel testing or some testing in the next couple of days. Uh, we don't know when they're gonna actually try to do a test fire of the boosters, but that may happen sooner than later. So if you get a chance to see this, this the size of this, it's amazing. They have the on YouTube, La Padre. SpaceX cams, they have a bunch of different cameras aimed at the facility, and you can see the status wow. and stuff. Wow. Uh, My Damn. God, that's monstrous. Uh, it, also, just to be clear, we're talking about the same Starship used twice, not not two different ones, right? I think that was back when they did, like, the... Is that? Is that legit? Like, is that? Uh, 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 yeah, that's from four months ago. Oh, that's when they did the full stack test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they've got the the booster, the actual, uh, what they think will be an orbit-capable booster with 33 engines mounted to it, sitting on the, the ring right now. Yeah. And uh, Bonnie uh, loves to tell this story, and I may have, she or I may have said it on, on Weird Things before, but, uh, you know, she came from the Rio Grande Valley. She grew up in Harlingen. Uh, just uh, 20 minutes from Boca Chica. Uh, she knows Boca Chica mainly as the place that you definitely slow down to the speed limit on your way to South Padre Island. <laughs> uh, and she uh, uh, wanted so bad to be a scientist, and uh, but it just all felt so very far away. Uh, and so she was thrilled that she made it as far as San Marcos and now lives in Austin. Uh, and then she gets ponderous and she thinks, I had to think, if I had just stayed in Harlingen... I could be cleaning the floors of SpaceX. <laughs> <laughs> you want more coffee, Mr. Musk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they look like they may be getting ready to do an ignition test. And there are a lot of, there's a lot of things that can go wrong between here and there. And, and I think when they're actually ready to do an orbit launch, uh, Elon will probably couch in the terms like, it probably won't work, everybody. It probably won't work. But we'll see. 33 engines. You know, and that that was one of the big criticisms. Like, we've never launched thirty three engines before. Well, I remember with the Falcon Heavy, which had twenty seven engines, never launched. Never like, launched that. But, and, <laughs> yeah, twenty seven. And, and also on the NASA side, I mean, all I heard about the James Webb Telescope was three hundred something points of failure, and it's like uh, uh, sometimes we get it right. Yep, yep. And uh, although, <laughs> what what is this? What, what what does this mean, Andrew? I, I I don't I don't know exactly what how we're supposed to. Oh, so there was an asteroid intercept psyche, which was going to send a I believe a payload on a Falcon Heavy, which was going to intercept an asteroid. 
And then NASA has says that they have some technical problems with the probe, so it's been delayed until next year. Okay, but that's oh. not Falcon Heavy. That's not Starship. Yeah, I thought that was Starship. Yeah, Falcon Heavy, yeah. yeah. So Starship, by the way, to give you an idea of how serious they are about this, there was this big, mysterious white box that showed up at the Starbase facility, and people were like, what is this? What is this? And then somebody put an you know, ORLV over it, and they look into it like, oh, this looks like a Starlink dispenser. So basically, oh. they've talked about that's what the first missions of Starship are going to be used for, is for Starlink. And basically, it's going to be a Pez dispenser where it's going to just shoot them out the side. Which, uh, <clears throat> much like, uh, 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 I don't know, when you shot a Tesla into space, it's like, uh, on the one hand, uh, it, it was ridiculous over the top. All of the criticism's fine. But also, it's like, if it wasn't going to be that, it was going to be just, you know... Uh, uh, Concrete. Ha yeah, exactly. A bunch of garbage, right? So it's like, if you're going to test this thing, and you're the one who has all the Starlink satellites, then, yeah, if you're comfortable with the... Uh, uh, idea that it might possibly yeah. likely scenario of it all blowing up, but you're the one who makes them then uh, by all means. Yeah. That was one of those things where you would hear people complain about like, Oh, the guy who's, you know, who sent his car into space. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, what did, what do you think about when, you know, I don't know, like, like, you know, ULA sent a de UL sent a Delta Heavy four Delta Four Heavy to test it and just use concrete blocks. That had to make you angry too, didn't it? Or, <laughs> or you know, they're like, what? They have no just... idea. It's like, all right, if you didn't have an opinion about that, no, you don't get an opinion about because this. It, ULA doesn't have a spicy Twitter account. It's literally. Well, I know, but yeah. I guess that's a point. Is to say, is it like, oh, they sent? Okay, so the dozens of other times it was concrete blocks. Do you? Well, you didn't even know that that's how it's yeah. done. So it's just uh, a thing you heard is done, and now you have an opinion on it. I'll tell you, as a spicy Twitter, <clears throat> as a spicy re reputation, Who? he's trying to rehabilitate it. What's he's that? He's on a media tour. Uh huh. He wants you to check him out on uh, Vodify. What's that? His VitVots. Oh, yeah. Talking mm. about the deep. You can call him deep. He has a new uh, memoir uh -huh. out. I haven't read the memoir yet, but I did listen to an hour-long interview it's only available on Audible uh -huh. behind the paywall, but it's called Deeper and Deeper. Uh, it's him. It's the deep being interviewed for an hour about his memoir. Yeah. And he, he gets real in there. Does he? He talks about his relationship to Icarus, the puffer, puffer fish. Wow. <clears throat> uh, yeah. You might hear the deep's wife kind of kind of leaning in, you know, giving helping him out from time to time. Sure. Uh, if you're if, if, if you're a fan of the deep. Uh, 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 or, or of well, his. I mean, of course, yeah. Uh, coming off Dawn of the Seven. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, the documentary The Boys uh, <laughs> <laughs> really, really introduced us to the Deep, a troubled figure who's uh, 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 on the path of redemption right now. Um, I started listening to this, and the first fifteen minutes, it's it's um, it's meant to sound off the cuff like an authentic interview. Uh, it's obviously audio only uh, with without the polish that the boys has on Amazon Prime. So there are times that you could tell that they're working on, on a script or whatever, and there, but there are other times that you totally lose yourself into believing this is a real That's sideways amazing. universe. At some point, they obliquely reference Joe Rogan on, on Vodify, but they change the name just enough uh, like they do on the boys. Yeah. Uh, uh, they they also open up actually canonical aspects to the boys, like things that you suspect watching the boys on uh, Amazon Prime become overtly confirmed in in this uh, about the deep's relationship to the proxy, not, not to, Scientology. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I may take a second lap on it. it. It was it was a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Andrew, let me ask you a question. In your private conversations with our friend Brian Brushwood, uh -oh. how much by percentage would you say is about or referencing his philosophies on creation, his <laughs> philosophies on branding, and his philosophies on uh, being an independent creator and his desire? to create content based on the uh, aforementioned topics. Brian? Brian Brushwood, yeah. Hmm. 
I mean, other than all the time. I, <laughs> I reverence that because I would put the percentage without kidding, uh, probably somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of all conversations with Brian, uh, which is why it was really, really awesome to watch him do something that I know you and I, Andrew, have been encouraging him to do for years and that oh, is chill out uh not be so <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh nope still working on oh, those oh, oh, but okay all right cool fresh right. out of the oven was brian brushwood's pretty much everything i know class he actually had uh uh what was we, we, we had a, we had a packed house we we were aiming for like we felt like we wanted to cap it at 15 because after that it would become unwieldy to ferry people to and from uh, uh the hotel or whatever everything yeah. i think we ended up with uh 17 bookings and then Luckily, we didn't we didn't overflow. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, uh, our, our our boy fully in his element, as we have been encouraging him to uh, uh, to do for years and years and years. And I would encourage anybody who uh, uh, has as you know, thinks that they want to create, wants to break out of their own rut uh, uh, in in terms of a brand and uh, uh, creation, wherever that might be. Uh, uh, look into it. If you're listening to this, then you know who Brian is. And let me tell you, it, uh, uh, the, the, there were people that know Brian very well that by the, the second day when I stopped in were like super, super, super dialed in and, and inspired. It was awesome to see from a personal level. Cause I know Brian has cared so much about this stuff. But uh, uh, also just the, the work itself was exceptional. So everybody look into that as they become available because there Which are I, more, yeah. more on the horizon. I, I, I guess all of this is code for uh, uh, we birthed a baby. Uh, uh, and while there's going to be tweaks and changes, uh, it will not be the last one. Uh, as a matter of fact, tonight I'm going to send out, and maybe we could discuss this in after things, I'm going to send out a email to uh, the people on the waiting list saying, uh, congrats. It's good. Uh, the next one will be in late, uh, August. Nice. I, I have to go do a demo. So I'll just jump in with my pick. Sure. Yes, please. Yeah. Let me cut the line here. If I may, Bryce, what do you got? Uh, I, uh, my pick is uh, check out the Mashpo, the channel on YouTube. And I think just do kind of a search for that. I think he's doing some cool stuff with 1d games and 4d. It's just neat. I just love watching somebody come up with a neat idea and problem solve. Uh, the 1D game is available on GitHub, and you can play it. You can try it yourself. So if you go click, uh, again, his channel is, I believe it's just Mashpo. Yeah, and uh, he's got a link uh, in that video, which we'll have on the in the show notes. Yep. But you can play it in your browser very easy. Yep, cool. Yeah. Cool. Nice. See, yep. Uh, yeah. Bryce. Uh, I've got a pick. Yeah. Uh, this is, it's back. It's back, and I think it's very good. What's back? What? Westworld. What? Uh, Westworld was back uh, last night, and you know what? That's a, just a good dumb show. That's just a good dumb show. <laughs> Are they back in Westworld? No, they're not. <laughs> so why isn't it called Robots on Patrol? <laughs> <laughs> well, Robots on Patrol. <laughs> gosh, it's <laughs> what I. <laughs> Robots don't, on don't Patrol. Silver face. Don't silver face. Don't silver face. There's a. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's it's not yet frowned upon. I'm gonna still be uh, 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 I'm gonna be on the right uh, side of history uh, on this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my apologies to my great grandchildren. <laughs> uh, what's cool and watching the behind the scenes uh, feature after the episode, uh, even they know like we're just gonna keep changing the concept every year, <laughs> which is fine. You know, at, at this is point. It? Yeah, absolutely. P okay. Partly because I think they don't really want to take a stance on like who's right, humans or hosts, um, and so they end hallmark up, of great storytelling. And so they just they they end up in a lot of really interesting action concept ideas, right? Yeah. The idea of humans and, and androids going to war, and then what happens after that war happens? They get stuck in an elevator. They gotta resolve their differences and yeah. Yeah, work it out. Uh, and, th and there's some they're they're trying to do some really interesting stuff with how the hosts can do stuff to the humans. It's we'll we'll see it, but I, I I really dig it. I think if you haven't watched Westworld, I think you could just jump in to this fourth season uh, because the two minute recap is very easy. There was fighting. This person thinks this. This person thinks this. Yeah. Then you'll get context clues. Turns out I like my Nolan's British. 
Uh, but yeah, Westworld. It's uh, HBO on HBO Max. Too. Yeah. All right. Well, see, you might uh, watch it. Everybody watch it. Bryce said, watch it. Everybody. You know, I mean, look. Everybody hey. watch it. I'd say, say just everybody watch. Everybody <laughs> hey should man, watch it. Watch it. I'm hey not. Man, I'm, hey, not the guy, I'm not the guy who hey hates man, everything. I'm the guy it. who loves everything. Uh, whoa, this whoa, is my whoa. new bit. We're talking Westworld here. Watch it. Bring, bring hey, Doug back. Watch it. <laughs> Bring Doug back. Yeah. Doug's gonna Watch give his it. review of Westworld. Excuse me, right. Doug. Did you did you see the uh, the HBO series Westworld? I loved it. When you head west from the islands, you catch the the Bahama breeze that I make in this in this uh, souvenir cup, available for only twenty dollars at our gift shop. I love Westworld. There's a, are they in the West? Nope, not for two seasons. But who cares? When you're drinking these babies, they'll they'll uh, it's fine for you and me, Doug, the middle-aged tiki bartender. Uh, so yeah, oh, uh, so yeah, Westworld. I think uh, it's good, dumb fun. <laughs> All right, uh, how's it been? It's been mm. happy. No, no, it's, it's been, been weird. weird. It's been weird. It's been, been weird. weird. It's been hey man, weird. watch it. Watch yeah. it. <laughs> what do you think this is? A toy? <laughs> it's a great toy. Beanie Babies changed the world. Oh, oh. It's, it's hard for Andrew oh. who. who uh, I don't think I've had a phone call with Andrew that hasn't begun with him fretting about the concept of AI uh, because it is so all powerful and there are things that he is seeing that are terrifying. Uh, uh, and then Bryce is like, look at the fun toy. Look at your toy. You're making a fun little toy. Yeah. Well, anyway. Anyway. Um, uh, well, hey, yeah. anyway, at least we introduced Doug. Oh, he's <laughs> my new favorite character. Doug Keep him on edit. speed dial. <laughs> Make him the background. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that, the boy's deeper and deeper thing. I, I would, I, I think you guys would dig it. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll catch up and then I'll, and then I'll. Uh, but you did got, they did they plug it at the end of the episode or something uh, or how did no, you find I, it? I just uh, I think I opened up Audible. And I oh like, really? I was like, oh, this is one yeah, of those boys content. Original, uh, original, uh, original. Uh, it said okay. 2022, the, so I'm assuming that like it's a uh, it it, it's it a seems to thing. be well, it's referencing he he wrote a book in the new season. So if this is yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it seems to actually take place mid season, like like uh, like okay. somewhere things have like, happened. He references things that happened this season. Gotcha. And then uh, and obviously. They're still going, yeah. Yeah. Um, all righty. Well, we can do a brief after things. A brief after things. Maybe we'll just get a little bit of update with everybody. Not boxer after things. No. Brief. Very brief. Very bo brief. I'm more of a bo I'm a, I'm kind of a boxer brief guy. What kind Are of? Are you? Yeah. I like I like the support. I gotta say, I I don't know where I'm gonna go because I'm at the end of uh of uh, me undies had me stocked for underwear mm -hmm. for uh, a while and now those are starting to degrade wow. under the pressure of my monstrous <laughs> thighs uh, so I think I'm going to need I'm going to need to make a call I'm kind of a free agent right mm. now on where I want to go underwear wise because I also don't want a bunch of different kinds anymore Right. I oh, want yeah. one one. Specific, and I think I'm gonna chuck all my socks too. I think I want the socks one thing. Socks, you, and that's it. Do it now. The socks thing, you can do it right now. <laughs> Go to Target, you can do it right now. I do it every couple of years. Yeah, just throw them out, and it's the never a bad idea. It's not a bad idea because they all wear out. Yeah, they all they stretch, they get holes, and and then it you're just making more trouble if you. And so like underwear, I don't know. I my underwear I feel like lasts a while, but um, you know, uh, I I like. Uh, the what are they? The modal, the, the kind of nicely stretchy. Yeah, thing, that's, that's that's what the, the meandies are. Yeah. Um, I got some on Amazon that were, uh, pretty good. Pretty good, very nicely priced. They do have like a flap. You know, oh, a P flap. It's yeah, it's like a little. Do you S not like a P flap? I don't like a flap. I'd like to have security. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't want you don't want the quick at, quick release action. <laughs> no, I don't really want my. You guys are talking out. about underwear, aren't you? We are. Here we are. Um, and also, uh, who is it that was sponsored us? Um, uh, Bulge? No, that's not what it's called. Uh, uh, what are they called? It's. Uh, mm, I forgot. Uh, uh, but I I didn't like how overly unnecessarily large the the bulge the bulges garage, were. Yeah, oh yeah, because that one's got a made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> that one's got a hoo ha holder, so yeah. you pop your boy in there, and it uh, and 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 the children. friends. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the say, friends. Yeah. And the friends. Yeah, the whole... And, and, and you're saying it was the whole roomy. Trio. Well, uh... <laughs> Some real snuffleupagus is out here. <laughs> I mean, uh... What's to do after things? <laughs> oh, big dongs is what we're talking about, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Balls and dongs. Floppy non-growers. It, it does. It does wick better. The wicker. It wicks yeah. better. It's the wicker. It's the wicker band. We're yeah. just gonna just leave that. that. Not uh, the yes, yeah, so not the bees. Yeah, we'll just do uh, some updates here on after things. Keep it nice Updating. and easy. Updating. Um, all right, everybody, ready to do some stuff? Did you need to go uh, take a break, Jay? Justin? F word no. All right. Mm. Well then, uh, is there is there a shortening of of Jerbs's, uh, of, of Juice's name that is somewhere between just the letter J and uh, and, and all of Juice? Scientists are still not sure about that. <laughs> no, the jury is yeah, still out on un, that one. We're, un, we're unsure. Although I did write in a Riverside uh, when we were recording, we're not wrong. Jerbs as my name, or I had Jerbs as my name, mm. and uh, uh, Jen Briney was unaware. I think she was even unaware that that I go by Jury, yeah, and that the sub nickname to Jury <laughs> is Jerbs, <laughs> uh, and so just went on a whole thing about how it was like like I should never call myself that because it makes her think of gerbils, and the only things that she thinks of when she thinks of gerbils is Richard Gere, yeah, uh -huh. who's a handsome man, yeah. Well, uh, there's yeah, there's a popular oh urban myth about I mean, we, Richard, yeah. Richard Gere, but, but anyway, that was why she said never call myself Jerbs again. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I don't know the myth, but Jesus Christ. Jiminy, Jiminy. All right. All right. Jiminy, Jiminy. <laughs> Let's do some after things here. That's my favorite drink to make. <laughs> <laughs> In three, two. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, brought to you, br uh, br brought bringing to you, you by. brought to you no, by brought listeners you by. like you. Brought to you by. And I'm bringing you... <laughs> Those wonderful voices of Brian Brushwood Hello. and Justin Robert Young. What up, what up? Uh, Andrew uh, had to go to a meeting, but uh, we're going to do a little bit of After Things. It's a show all about being creative professionals and uh, how we get stuff done, do stuff, get things done. Uh, uh, I have to imagine that the two of you have some stuff to talk about this week. Yeah. I, I, you know, we talk about uh, how to be an independent creator. And uh, in this case, uh, I, I don't want to steal all of the thunder for our A Block tomorrow, but um, uh, I'm sure we'll do some more talking about. Uh, I did my first two day class on everything I know about being an independent creator, and uh, it was well attended. And um, you should stop talking because you're going to undersell it. Okay. People from around the country, Ooh. if not around the world. Ooh. I didn't ask everybody where <laughs> they came from, but uh, it was an amazing group of people. And your boy, Brian Brushwood, uh, was the, the, the coach that, that they needed. He laid out everything that he has said to uh, me at various junctures of my life and career uh, laid it out. He uh, uh, explained things before uh, uh, using the metaphors that he uses to describe them, which actually made some conversations that I've had with Brian a lot clearer because sometimes <laughs> Brian will just give me the metaphor version of it and just say like, well, you know, story circle, rabbit on the table. <laughs> and I'll just be like, yeah, right. Yeah. And I won't know what he's talking about, but he actually explained everything for these fine <laughs> folks, but they paid money. I've been doing it for free. <laughs> so get what you pay for. Uh, no, I mean, it was, it, I, I, I cannot underline enough how proud I am that you a did it because I've, I've, I've joked about it, but it really isn't a joke. You've talked to me 150 times more about your philosophies on branding and, and, and creation and stuff like that more than you have magic in, in our friendship. Yes. Full start. Yes. Uh, including the fact that the first few times I talked to you was for a magic website as a <laughs> magic journalist talking to a magician, even including all of that. There has been more conversation about all this stuff, and I know that you have flirted with different versions of how to do this. It is going to be a, a, a book or some version of a you know video series to documentary, and then it was going to be a crowdsource thing, and then it was going to be a blah, blah, blah. This is where you've kind of landed to put this level of knowledge. Not to say that it precludes you from doing any of those other things, sure. but this is where it broke out from just your brain into the real world. Uh, how 
are you feeling about conquering that Great. that element of it? Great. Uh, 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 the only uh, the number one thing I'm most excited about is that maybe the next class it won't be over a hundred degrees every single day. Uh, beyond that. Uh, Beyond like, controlling the weather, uh, everything yeah. went uh, exactly to plan. Yeah, right? I mean, can't a guy have just one thing? <laughs> Total control of the weather? <laughs> uh, but uh, They uh, should make a building where you can control the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we, were, we were all huddled up inside the soundstage the entire time. You know, we were, we were crispy cool and all that. But um, th there was this great moment after uh, you called me out and made me commit to doing the class and everything all filled up and everything. Uh, on Friday, or I guess on Thursday, uh, right before everyone started arriving, uh, I had lunch with a, 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 a pretty famous local DJ friend of mine, uh, and and I, I thought I was going to be able to leave without describing the class, but but I was like, ah, I got to go do slides. For what? Well, for the class. Eh, give me the short version. And I, and I really did my best to consolidate everything down as tightly as I could, uh, but it involved giving a few examples, and by the third example, I saw this this switch flip in his eyes and he was like, this has to be a book. And I'm like, yes, I know, I know, but I need to spend time in the rock tumbler. I need to have everything challenged. I need to say it enough times that it becomes the best, most polished examples of everything. So uh, uh, getting to do this in a class, uh, one of my favorite parts was at the end, the last hour and a half was, uh, uh, it was uh, me, Matt Donnelly from uh, Penn Sunday School and Ice Cream Social, uh, Mike TV and Brett Weaver from Great Night. Um, and, and I was like, uh, look, uh, uh, I'm told that when you get a PhD, you have to defend your thesis. I want to defend my thesis. What do you got? And uh, uh, people, it was really interesting because over the next hour and a half, uh, the questions people were asking were uh, increasingly personal and they got closer and closer to, that sounds like a question you have to ask yourself, not me. And uh, what that meant was, oh my God, I did it. I, I, I described that, that groundwork, that foundation, that, 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 that metaphor of, of, of how to uh, identify a place to build your story and then how to execute it in a way that is uh, self, uh, per uh, uh, self fulfilling, self perpetuating. You know, um, it was great. It was it was magic. It was like uh, somebody asked me something a couple hours later, like how did it go? And I said, "Ask me tomorrow." I just gave birth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that was it. It was I, and I can't wait for it to get bigger and have more guests and for us to figure out better logistics uh, when it comes to you know food and entertainment and, and this, all that these stuff. are nitpicking i mean like, yeah. like having having been around there nobody was complaining about any of these but obviously you want to continue to make it better and better and better as you experience it uh what was the most surprising uh, uh element of your 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 philosophy that that hit people like was there any reactions while you were doing it that surprised you uh it was astonishing how many people were already practicing media people or who had already started their project who very clearly had never paused to even consider what their what their niche would be like they uh, as, as we describe it it's like if you're a seed planted somewhere you want to be planted where you have all the sunshine where you have no competition uh failing that you have to be uh more interesting as a plant in order to yeah. to, to you know survive in that environment but it was so clear that that the very first most foundational thing the whole reason that uh as i talk about in the class when uh scam school was launched it was launched because i did searches all over youtube for magic tricks and they all looked the same they were all a pair of hands in front of a web camera and a a a, 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 a bad off camera mic and people didn't want to show their faces there was no social proof and uh the more i looked the more i realized there was television that involved theoretically real humans looking your way, mind freak. Um, uh, and then there was uh, uh, YouTube content that was all done in a room by themselves. There was nothing that looked like a television show that, uh, uh, that, that taught good magic to yeah. real humans. And uh, once I realized that this show has no competition, that was a big part of what made Scam School a success and so on and so on. Uh, that foundational first move, that before the first episode ever came out, 
uh, was clearly news to uh, maybe as much as a, a quarter to a third of the class. And it's like, I, man, ain't nothing better than feeling like Prometheus, uh, uh, stealing fire from the gods and handing it to other people. I think so much of what your journey with this was is because you, you are somebody who has consumed a lot of this content. Yeah. Either like success minded or or self help whatever whatever you want to define that genre it uh, uh, you have read the books you've gone to the classes you have you have done a lot of this you understand it and you have very specific very very passionate opinions on what makes a good thing and what makes a bad thing and you are very like despite the fact that you have way more knowledge than probably even people that would buy this class, you never want to be the person who somebody is like, well, yeah, it wasn't great. Like you, you have a high standard. So I think that there's a reason why you were able to come out of the box like that. And, and you were able to get those reactions because this is something that you probably could have done. I mean, certainly five years ago and, 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 I mean, and I, maybe I, I could have done it 20 years, 20 ago, years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but I, ugh. I didn't want to be that guy who was only famous for being the guy who was selling telling books you how to make how to do famous. the thing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. So, um, uh, it, it feels earned and, uh, poetically, I, I, I do love the fact that I'm 47 now. Teller was 47 when he wrote that letter to me. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the launch of world's greatest con and, and that, that star is really just beginning. It's, you yeah. know, 10 to 30 year rise and so on makes me feel really, really good that this is no BS. This isn't a thing that used to work. It's a thing that we're is currently doing working. right now. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and also, uh, that moment where this crazy Wonka factory gets to become a real place to the people who help make it happen is really special. One of the, I, I sent you a photo of it. Um, in fact, uh, uh, let me send one over to, uh, I think, uh, can you forward that over to Bryce? Uh, actually, I don't, I don't know what, or I think what I you're asking. Is it the uh, thing that you shared in our shared album over the weekend? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, is, uh, is it a card? Yeah. Okay. So uh, one of my favorite moments that happened was uh, one of the students, uh, very talented, uh, uh, he has a day job, but a, a very talented magician. He uh, does a trick oh, for me, oh. and I—I yeah, I don't think that was in our our shared thing. Yeah, it's in Hebrews. No, I, think I just saw a Hebrews. card too. I don't—I don't know. Uh, there was one picture that was in there, and it all looked about your own personal goals. Yeah, no, that—that that was oh, an old no, thing no, that no, you no, said no. here. I, oh, I, I got, 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 it, got it. I got you. Okay, got you. all right, all right. But he—he uh, 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 he says, "Hey, can I do a magic trick for you?" And uh, I'm a very, very good magic uh, 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 participant. I understand that it's not my job to bust the trick. And, and the best thing that can happen is I'll be amazed and impressed. So I'm very good at looking people in the eyes when they ask questions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I, I suspect a card is being forced, uh, I don't know. And then, uh, but it gets shuffled very fairly, gets lost and everything. And, uh, and then he finds the card, it's the Jack of Spades. And then my jaw drops as he peels apart the Jack of Spades to reveal the Brian Brushwood owes me a drink golden ticket buried inside. And it was like, ah, oh, like it was, it was amazing. It was so, so good. What was that golden ticket from again? Uh, that was that was from the labyrinth, the puzzle box with um, uh, we had uh, the diamond Jim Tyler Delta dice in there, and uh, uh, I think a couple of bamboozler decks, and mm -hmm. that golden ticket. And uh, sure enough, it felt really really good to right there on the spot have to buy that person a drink. Nice. Uh, do, do you feel like do you feel like you achieved your goals? Uh, yeah. editorially in Are you ready to die now that you've achieved your goals? No, I mean... <laughs> no, 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 no. No? Okay, matter. well, the, the answer is no. Okay. You gotta ask. I mean, you gotta it, ask. Uh, uh, before I mean, I, did you hit your targets? I mean, did you say? Did you talk 100%. about the things you want to talk about 100%. and say yeah. them the way you yep, wanted to yep, say them? Yep, yep, yep. Like for your entire life, and now you're ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> there, there was not a single major point that got forgotten. Um, there was a couple of bits of flair that I was like, oh, I meant to do that. But uh, I'll get them next time, and everything is, uh, as just to put it, just sanding down the edges from here. Um, uh, I can't wait to 
uh, go through multiple laps of this so it becomes so polished. I can't wait to see what a 20 minute version of the most important parts look like and end up uh, uh, doing that as either a think piece uh, video or uh, you know, a, a public uh, presentation to see if I can possibly convey everything in its essence. Essence. I can't wait to write the first book in the series. Um, uh, I can't wait to write the seventh book in the series because uh, at this point, like, uh, uh, now, now, uh, uh, spoiler alert, uh, uh, this is the overview of everything that I've done for the last 25 years. There are really six kind of bullet points. And uh, I realized, oh, wait, after doing five of these weekends, it's going to be real easy to write that first book about the whole thing. And then after that, all I have to do is write an individual book about each of the six each thing. bullet points. Yeah. And it's like, uh, and uh, as as uh, Andrew has taught us, the best way to promote your first book is to write your second, third, mm -hmm. fourth, fifth book, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, man, it, it's uh, right beforehand, I confess that uh, I ain't been this nervous and excited since I quit my day job. And uh, I, I think it's quite good. And uh, I, it, 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 I, this is where I should stop talking again because I'm just going to undersell <laughs> it. Uh, yeah, uh, I, think, I think you've done, you've done, you've acquitted yourself well uh, in, in describing it. I think that the product itself is exceptional. And uh, I heard, I heard tale of, of tears, Bryce. Tears? Tears. Like uh, people, uh, people... La levels, layers. Nope. No. No. Like physical tears because people were, were wow. making realizations about themselves by way of the wisdom that your boy Brian Rushwood was. Notice he didn't say person. He said people. Uh, huh? Yep. Uh, 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 wow. It, it yeah. apparently really connected and uh, it was really, it was really special. And... Uh, uh, anyway, uh, if if you're an independent, you can get creator, a free you can get a free reading for Brian Hartley <laughs> at your local center. If people were interested, if they listened to all of this, how would they yeah, sign would up they, or uh, get uh, onto a thing? Uh, 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 spoiler alert! Uh, tonight, I'm going to send out an email to the people on the waiting list. If you want to get on the waiting list or 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 actually jump the line and just buy it, next uh, session is going to be late uh, August. That was the most popular date. And we wanted to get at least one out of the way beforehand. Um, so if you go to the Scam Stuff store and just search ev everything, you'll find it. Uh, yeah, I put I typed in the word class, and it was uh, there. You go. Uh, was and so wait, so so you uh, can get on the wish list, or you can I guess buy uh, buy some. Yeah, August twentieth to twenty first. Um, uh, so yeah, if you're watching live, you're finding out before even the people on the waiting list uh, know about it. Uh, but uh, but man, I, I I can't wait to go again. It's it's one of those. Uh, it's it's like that first time you uh, ride a bull, mechanical bull, metaphor. Uh, mm. You ride a mechanical bull for, you make it past eight seconds, but you flop off. You're like, oh, no, 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 let me go again. I, I, I could do better this time. It's, I'm really excited. I think it was a simile. Uh, oh, it is as. Nope. Uh, it is. It I am a cowboy <laughs> riding a mechanical bull. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's a metaphor. That's yeah. that, okay, every that's conversation yeah. I have with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 You just can't use like Wrong or Wrong way as. on the wheel. <laughs> if, you, if you say like or as, then it's a simile. Uh, now, now it's the weird part where it's like, now we have to figure out how to market <laughs> the show or the event about marketing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sounds like a good exercise. I feel like, uh, feel like you, it, it was the role you're born to play. <laughs> well, and, and there is a bit of irony because uh, there was a little hunk in there where I talk about how when I talk to artists, the toughest thing is to get them to open up to the idea that maybe, just maybe, they've created something so precious and important to some number of people that they uh, are uh, th that they are worthy of receiving more money than they normally want to charge. Uh, ironically, I am deeply, <laughs> uh, I, 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 oh, shucks. Yep. I, I've given away all my advice for free for 20 years, and now I am I am wrestling with that exact same problem myself. Uh, people are saying record it and turn it into a master class. All in good time, yeah. friends. All in good time. What would it sound like if it was a master class? I'm Brian Brushwood, oh, and I'm the master oh, of no. class. Oh, yeah. Rich people, poor people. 
Oh, wait. Oh, it's Doug. Was, I think it's just Doug the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah. Hey, welcome. This is me, Doug. I like to give you a master class on how to mix a Navy grog. <laughs> you put a little bit of rum and a lot of love. <laughs> anyway, I learned this from Brian Brushwood. That was a gift. Uh, uh, <laughs> money good. on the table, as it said. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I was actually referencing Barry when Gene Cousineau does a master class and somebody comes in going, woo, and he says, what, what, are, you, what are you? He says, a ghost? He says, wrong. What are you? Embarrassed? Yes, go. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen uh, that's, oh, that. Oh, that. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, great. Any other last things uh, that you want? Like, uh, Yo, man, uh, uh, get your hands on uh, deeper and deeper. Uh, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we don't have to do picks. I just no, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else. Uh, um, I'm going on vacation, so I, I, I don't know. I feel like I got a little bit of senioritis, like because yeah. I did a lot of prep for like what the podcasts are gonna do, and I feel like I've kind of gotten through that, and now I'm just like, okay, I'm just do this, whatever. Uh, yeah, because you won't be with us for uh, July, the upcoming July. I'm no longer out, with us. Out, Audi five thousand goes out. Yeah, to my boy, be dead and come back German. Oh, <laughs> yeah, German Robert Young. Yeah, German Robert Young is gonna show up. I'm gonna. Hey, I'm do gonna you think I'm gonna be able to? All right, German Robert Young is German Robert Young until he says something really on point. At which point he becomes Germain Robert. Germain Young. Robert Young. No, so I've I've made a vow that I'm gonna try and go to Germany for two weeks and not mention World War Two. And so. uh <laughs> Uh, Ashley was was talking about like oh that we can go to these old former bases that were used like during because she knows I'm a history like nerd uh, and I'm I'm just I'm just gonna walk in and I'm like wow never heard of this <laughs> the who's <laughs> that's crazy wow is there, are there is there like a movie about this or something I have never heard of any of this I'm sorry I don't I don't see national History. socialists. <laughs> Uh, shouts out to uh, uh, a fan of uh, World's Greatest Con who sent us an email saying that uh, oh, yeah. we were out on the road in Europe uh, listening to World's Greatest Con, and we were so amazed by season one, we took a three-hour detour, and they sent us a picture of the grave of... Uh, Glendower William, Michael. Glendower yeah. Michael, uh, a.k.a. Bill Martin, uh, in, in Huelva, Spain. So they literally mm. they they, yeah, wow. they they added they tacked it three hours onto their trip <laughs> because they were listening to the podcast so they could take a picture of the grave, which is I would uh, like to amazing. think they went on to season two to make up you know to they went the, they went right they from went Welver straight to, to Studio Beverly City. Hills yeah <laughs> oh, awesome well uh, I think that'll do for after things unless we got any last things no I don't think there's any more things are you that sure I can talk nothing about. this weekend nothing oh happening? yes yeah. Yes! Yeah! All right, so uh, RTX, Rooster <laughs> Teeth Expo, is a fun little conference that happens in Austin, Texas. And by when, fun little conference, we mean almost as large as Dragon Con. It's a gigantic thing. It's a huge deal. And uh, uh, we are going to be a part of it for the first time. Uh, long time coming, but we are very glad it is here. And uh, we are honored to be shutting this mofo down yeah. uh, on, on the sketch. We are the last thing that is happening on Sunday. That is our ideal uh, uh, time. It has always been when we've played best at, at conferences. Uh, and so we encourage everybody to come on down to Austin, Texas this weekend for Rooster Teeth Expo. Get your tickets. Uh, but Sunday, if you, if you are going to do only a one-day thing and you mm -hmm. desperately want to see us, then get the Sunday ticket live Scam Nation, yep, live, uh, great, great night. night, and uh, that is all happening this Sunday at RTX yeah. Rooster Teeth Expo. What oh. does Doug think of it? Uh, uh, when when uh, hold on, let's get Doug back up. Uh, hey, when I when I think of a rooster teeth, I think of uh, 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 uh put it in a bu bucket and pour it out because that's how I make all my drinks down here at my favorite bar, the rooster teeth. Uh, it's uh, uh, an old uh, Bahamian 
a legend about a man who took the teeth out of a rooster only to turn it into a, this delicious slushy beverage. <laughs> it doesn't uh, really look like a tiki drink. It, it looks like a... <laughs> it's a blended rooster. If you don't, <laughs> oh, think, if you don't think this is a tiki drink, <laughs> then you can say the old Bahamian phrase, you're racist. Oh, shoot. I'm <laughs> Doug. Ah, sorry, Doug. Alrighty, well, I guess oh. that will do it for After Things. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, right. yeah, let's How's do it. How's it been? It's been After. after. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Dude, the podcast is done. This is over. Damn, it's over now. I poured it out. Wow. <laughs> Pour <laughs> one out for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tiki legend. <laughs> <laughs> Middle-aged tiki bartender. What an amazing service Dolly is. Fun toy. This website Fun is free. I may have definitely texted Andrew Bain just to make sure we're good. And we're good. Alrighty, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back with Cord Killers in a few hours. Uh, it'll be Tom and Brian and uh, myself will be there. All sorts of good stuff. Great night tomorrow. It'll be yep. the last one before RTX. Yep. I mean, I mean that. Yep. yep. Anything else? No. Yep. Yep. Nope. Yep. Hi. Nope. Yep. 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 Nope. Yep.